Hello, and welcome to 264 of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And today, due to some talk in the old Discord server about uh, the stack and maybe holding priority mm-hmm. and stuff, we're going to revisit uh, some of our like anatomy of a turn stuff. Yeah. And all not way... all of it. Yeah, but... we're, we're not going to re- redo the whole episode, but we did, uh, back when we were doing our first and second learn to play series i believe uh all the way back in episode 133 that's like two and a half years ago yeah actually a little bit more than that um it's a long time it is a long time but we kind of went over you know the different parts of a turn and how to navigate through a turn and that kind of stuff so i think we're going to revisit some of that and uh maybe we'll get into the specifics of the question that was asked but i think we answered it and in the discord so i don't know if that's super important but just figured we'd explain some of the stack stuff how things resolve how things are put on the stack yeah the the uh your your we answered it mm-hmm. we's doing a lot of heavy work for me because i <laughs> no. i didn't do a damn thing no we're a team so, buddy come on uh it was maybe you you and the other listeners answered it <laughs> i was like oh yeah i did see you like this whole thing doesn't about... work with just me we're a team I guess I did see you talking about that. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going to go over that. So if you want to reach out to us on social media, Facebook, Discord, X, email, all those links are in the description. Maybe something you have a question about. Yeah. Will find its way onto the podcast. You never know when we're looking for an episode or what we feel like talking about. So hit us up. Let us know what you want to hear. Uh, if you're looking yeah. to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. First is with our TCG player affiliate link, casualtryhard.com slash TCG. Surf on over there using that link and whatever you purchase after arriving at TCG player via that link will help to support the show. We would appreciate it. If you want to support us more directly, that can be done at patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg. Patrons get access to our show notes, so you get a sneak peek about what the upcoming episode's going to be about. Patrons also get access to about another hour's worth of content out of us in the form of our pre-show ramblings, where it's just two buddies catching up, talking about whatever we feel like, completely off the cuff. You never know. Um, Yeah. If that sounds good to you, or if you just want to support the show, uh, like I said, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG. You can chip a couple bucks in and know you're helping to keep your favorite podcast alive. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're not gonna like we're not gonna like just uh, rehash all of episode one thirty three. Yeah, I don't think there's any okay. reason to. I mean, unless you guys want to hear it, let us know. Yeah, but um, there's a there's a few things that we can kind of go over that like touch on the stack mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So we have some vocab things. Sure. And like the kind of the first thing to know is the active player and that's the player who the who currently has the ability to do stuff right. when it's you when it's your turn you start out as the active player mm-hmm. right and then there is this thing called priority mm-hmm. right and you have priority when you're the active player. You have the right. ability to do something, and you can only do stuff when you have priority. Mm-hmm. So the active player is whose turn it is, not active player whose turn it's not, and then whoever has priority is the person who gets to do something at any given time. Do you do you have to have priority to undisguise or unmorph? Because that doesn't use the stack, right? Can you just, nope, I'm doing this now. I see you having huh. your mana wait. Huh. What are... Uh, here. I don't know that there's ever a reason I to unmorph this. Do it when you don't have priorities. Player, but... Um, doesn't use the stack. Yeah, it says that. Do you need, like... Uh... Hmm, Mega Morph. I mean, I'm looking at Morph. Uh, I mean, the rules are identical. So. Yeah. One has ward and one does not. And the name is the only difference. Oh, 
Anytime you have priority, you may turn a face okay. down permanent you control with morph with a morph ability face up. Okay, so you do have to have priority. You have to have priority, but it doesn't use the stack. Right. Just so happens. Yeah. And then we've said the stack a few times. Mm-hmm. And what is the stack? Um it's kind of an imaginary zone. It's a zone that doesn't actually exist but it's a place where things go to resolve. Uh, kind of like the graveyard is where things go when they die and exile is where things go when they leave the game. Uh, the stack is where things go to resolve. So if you've played Arena, that little window pops up with all of the things, all of the cards that are like currently trying to resolve, uh, that mm -hmm. would be the stack. Yes. There can be spells on the stack. Uh, there can be triggered abilities. There can be activated abilities. Am I missing anything? That's, that's basically triggered, it. Triggered, right? activated. Yeah. Spells. Mana, mana abilities don't use the uh, stack. Right. Neither do morph abilities. Neither does the legend rule. No, those are... The legend rule is settled in state-based actions. Right. Right. So, uh, state based actions. It, it action. doesn't use the stack, though, right? It does not. Like, yeah, state based yeah. actions don't use the stack. Yep. And then, while we're here, state based actions is basically kind of the game cleaning up after itself. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, a, a judge will tell you that damage doesn't kill a creature, state based actions do. Correct. So, basically, whenever, like, a spell resolves or like priority passes, the game looks and goes like, hey, this creature has three damage, on, has three toughness. It has three damage marked on it. It's dead. At this point, I kill it. Yep. Right? Or, you know, you have zero life. Right. I'm checking. That means you lose. Mm -hmm. Or I have two, you have two legends in play. That's not allowed. Yep. So before anyone gets priority again, I have to clean this up. Yeah. So I will now get rid of what make you get rid of one of these legends. This is like state based actions might actually be a little bit more relevant now than when we recorded this originally. Just because so? like spells have gotten a lot longer. It, not that state based actions are any more relevant, but mm -hmm. like they might. I guess I don't know how I want to say this. They might be something that you would realize. Encounter more? Had, yeah, encounter more, like realize that it's a thing more now than you might have a few years ago. Um, think of like the commands where you mm -hmm. like do two different things or you do one thing multiple times. Um, like let's just say Culligan's command, right? You pick two things. You're going to deal two damage to something and you're going to blow up an artifact. Well, state-based actions isn't going to check until the very end of the spell resolving. So, like, the the two things that you're killing are both going to go to the graveyard at the same time because that's when state-based actions check. But, like, if Arena is running particularly slow, it might deal the two damage to the creature. Right. Beat. Right. Blow up and then and then the artifact blows up and the creature goes to the graveyard kind of all at the same time. Yeah. Because it's resolving the spell in the order that it's written. Right. And it dealt the damage and then like dealt with the artifact and then they went away. Yep. So anytime the stack is empty, then there's nothing on the stack, mm -hmm. the active player has priorities. Whoever's turn it is you get to make the first move until you like give away priority doing something. Yeah, and basically anytime you do something, you will give away priority. Yes. Unless you specifically be... state otherwise. Yes. Um so see here. Well, I guess anytime you do anything that uses a stack, because like if you if you play a land that doesn't pass priority. But no, that's a, if you play are special actions, right? But if you play a land with an ETB ability, then you would like pass Lotus priority. Field, right? 
the trigger goes on the stack and then you have something that you can do yep. in response to that. Yep. So um, to put something on the stack, if it targets, it has to have a target. So, right, like you can't put something on the stack that doesn't have a legal target. Um, I guess it depends on it depends on where the if is, I guess, right? <laughs> well, it has to have a legal target. If there's a spell yes. that targets multiple things, you only have to have one of the things remain, right? Legal. Legal. Yes. But I was thinking like um like uh something that would like exile a card from the graveyard. If it go, if there are no cards in the graveyard, mm -hmm. if it says like exile target card from a graveyard, your opponent loses two life. Right. If there's no card in the graveyard, that trigger doesn't ever get to the stack. Yeah. Because to be placed on the stack as it is worded, mm -hmm. it has to, um, it has to have a target to go on the stack. Right. Where it has to have a target to resolve also. Um, and actually, I think that's more what I meant than what you were what you were getting at. Okay, yeah. So like, I was just thinking like when you play arena, yeah, right. Our little stack, a little floaty stack zone. Mm -hmm. There are times where you like will go to do something or mm -hmm. like move through like upkeep. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, why didn't that go? Why didn't that like pop up? Yeah, like on the stack, and it's like, oh there were no legal targets to put it on the stack. Right. Right. So for something to go on the stack, if it has to have a target, that target has to be there. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, you know, the way they write a bunch of stuff now, like you may <laughs> exile a, a thing. If you do. Yeah. Do this which, other thing. Yeah. I, I assume is like for arena consistency and ease. Probably. But um or just to give you a little bit more flexibility. Yeah. So um so whenever whenever you it's your turn, you're the active player, you have priority. It's kind of like I think I use this analogy in the episode. It's like baseball. Mm -hmm. You're the pitcher mm -hmm. when you're the active player. Yep. And you're the one who decides kind of the pace of play. Right. Right. If you just want to sit there and like rope Mm -hmm. That's you your can. prerogative. That is the thing you can do. Yep. Your the non-active player can't like force you to do anything, right? Until you give them priority. Mm -hmm. So, um, the the main place that like priority starts to matter most is well, I guess the place that stuff tricky stuff happens, right? There's so there's the upkeep. Mm -hmm. Where when you move from phases, starting with the upkeep, there is a priority pass. There's an ask. There's an implied ask of... Before you go to the next phase. Yeah. Hey, I would like to, as the active player, I would like to progress this game yep. from the phase we're currently in, upkeep, to the next phase, draw. Yeah. Are you cool with that? If, uh, if this doesn't make sense to you... Um, if you've only played on Arena or play mostly on Arena, maybe you've forgotten this. If you go into full control mode, it will force you to do this in between every single phase. Um, yes. And like, if we're confusing you, maybe that's a way for, for you to understand what's happening. Just open up a game against Sparky and go into full control, and you'll see all of the priority passes in there because it'll ask you, you know, if you want to pass or if you yeah. want to continue or whatever it says so it um so arena kind of plays to some degree like a uh kind of like a paper game mm -hmm. where like usually as the active player you like untap and you go to draw if right. you don't have anything to do in your in your upkeep and your opponent might be like hey 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 I actually want to do something before you draw your card. Yeah. Right. And so like you tried to pass priority to go to the draw step and they were like, well, hold on for a second. I do have something. Mm -hmm. And like 
arena kind of does the same thing where like if they don't have anything they can do you just get to draw your card right right but like if you if like your opponent has something they can do they put a stop on your upkeep yeah it'll hang on upkeep until they're like no no i'm good i don't want to do this yeah right so like that's the first place and then you go to the draw step and when you get to draw, the first thing that happens is you draw your card. Mm-hmm. You can't do you anything can't... before that. Yep, yeah, it's hit, draw, draw card. Yeah, kind of like when you go to your upkeep, the first thing that happens is any triggered abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with the draw step. First thing that happens is you draw a card. It n- doesn't use the stack. It's a special action, whatever. You draw the card, and then there's a pri- round of priority. Yeah, that round of priority is... Because you you immediately try to leave the draw step, right? Or the, the the yeah the draw step, right? Yeah. So it's like draw the card immediately, go to main phase one. Mm-hmm. But there's that priority phase pass as you go to leave. Yep. So like, or if there's any triggered abilities. Hmm. Are there things that trigger Shieldred. Sylvan Library? Oh yeah, Shieldred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've just tried to block that card out. Forget so soon, huh? Okay, Underworld yeah. Dreams. Uh, Obnixilis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, usually, well, before Shield Dream. Library is a weird one. <laughs> That's the one you brought up when trying to explain the rules of Sylvan Library? <laughs> Fine. I, well, I was thinking, like, your Colagon's Command uh, yeah. uh, example, right, is... Uh, if your opponent has zero cards, right, right, and they draw their card, you can be like, okay, before you go to your main phase, I'm going to call a gun's command and make you discard that card, right, right, and so a lot of times it'll be like some sort of discard or some way to like interact with their hand mm-hmm. at instant speed. You would like want to stop in their draw step, right. Now on arena, it's like kind of an all-encompassing stop. If you put a stop on their upkeep. There's yeah. a stop in their upkeep and, and then their draw in their draw. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And then you get to the main that. phase. Well, it's I guess it's one less icon, right? Or could yeah, you imagine if you true. have the upkeep icon and then the draw? Like, how often do you does anyone actually do something in your draw step? And not that often. It's not zero. But I mean, like, when it happens, though, it's super impactful. Yes, usually. Yeah. You know, you get call you get your card Colagon command, so it's like, oh, they got rid of my creature that I just drew because I yeah. couldn't play it. Or you get clicked or whatever. Yeah. Oh, Sylvan Library, and you're like, bring up Vendillion Click. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Hey, that card doesn't even see play anymore. At least Sylvan Library does. Yeah, you know, exactly. Um so um and then you get to the main phase, which is like where you play magic. For the most part. Yeah, I mean, this is probably where you've spent the majority of your magic games. Mm -hmm. So what can you do in the main phase? As the active player, uh, you have the ability to play land in either... Like, your main phase is split into a couple different parts. There's a pre-combat main phase, your combat phase, and your post-combat main phase. Um, In either your pre- or post-combat main phase... The active player has the opportunity to play one land per turn, like we mentioned, as a special action. Um, They can play spells at sorcery speed, so creatures, artifacts, enchantments without flash, and sorceries, and planeswalkers, and battles, I guess. We have battles now. Yeah. Um, They can also play instants. Mm -hmm. Uh, They can also use activated abilities. some say, you know, at sorcery speed, some or activate only as a sorcery or whatever. Active player can do those. Mm-hmm. And is that it? I think. Did you say planeswalker? I d- well, I didn't say tick up a planeswalker. That is the other yeah. You thing. can you can act you can yep. activate a loyalty ability on a planeswalker. Yeah. So yeah, this is where like the vast majority of things happen. Mm-hmm. Um. They've also with like the sagas. Um, oh they've yeah. Tried to one. like where when you move to your main phase, the saga gets a uh, a I don't want to say a lore counter. Yep. Um, 
and they've started to move things to like your pre-combat main phase Mm -hmm. or like at the beginning of your main phase because they're trying to de-emphasize the upkeep in like modern design yeah a little bit a little bit so uh because they could have easily made sagas tick up in your yeah i think there upkeep. was i don't remember what it is off the top of my head but i think there was a reason that they wanted it to happen during your main phase instead of your upkeep yeah um but this is where we do most of the stuff mm-hmm. um like you and, i mean you just mentioned sagas real quick so um just to clarify sagas is that's another special ability like putting the counter on the saga doesn't use the stack it's a thing that happens right at the start of your pre-combat main phase kind of like drawing a card during your draw step or uh triggered abilities at the beginning of your upkeep it's a thing that just happens you it can't is, do anything before it it is technically unmissable right if you like realize later in the turn again if you're playing in paper if you realize later in the turn mm-hmm that you didn't tick your saga up yep you you just get to tick the saga up and do the thing well not get to you have to you have to exactly you like judge i forgot to like take my saga from one to two and you just have to do it and then same as drawing a card you can't miss drawing your card for your turn the fact that the uh token went or the the you got the second lore counter mm-hmm. then makes the the whatever the the chapter of that saga happen yeah so like you know there there's no way you can miss it right technically um and then this next part is like again there's a, a priority pass between um main phase and going to combat Mm -hmm. and um so we can see we get the the uh the wording right here so if you say as the active player again this is in paper move to combat that is a shortcut that shortcuts you through a few things it does so technically the main phase goes to um the beginning of combat Mm-hmm. step and then that gets you to declare attackers mm-hmm. right and if you say go to combat you're shortcutting to declare attackers, declare attackers yeah. that matters because if you have a vehicle to crew you it has have to, to be crew- crewed before you declare attackers you can't crew so it, it while to- declaring attackers so it has to be crewed in uh, either in your main phase mm-hmm. or in um, <clears throat> your beginning of combat. Beginning of combat. Yes, thank you. My brain turned off. Yeah, no problem. And uh, so that came up in Kaladesh a lot because yeah. there was um, Toolcraft Exemplar mm-hmm. would get, there'd be a trigger to make it bigger if you controlled artifacts. Right. That happened and then at it would the beginning be, of combat. At the, at the beginning of combat phase. And then that often made it big enough to then crew a vehicle. Right. So if you say go to combat, you are not missing that. That was you're missing you're not missing the 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 make bigger part of it. Right. You're missing your ability to crew though. Crew. Exactly. Like um so, like, now, again, Arena deals with this, right? There's, like, sometimes there'll be, like, a little, like, pause that you have to, like, push through. If you have, like, a vehicle, mm-hmm. if you go to uh, if you go to combat, there's, like, a little beat where you have to, like, kind of go through that, like, priority pass. Yep. Um, and then, whatever, you, uh, what's it called? You get to declare attackers, you say, this is what I'm attacking with, and you tap them. Mm -hmm. If they have to tap, or I don't know. You give them a good shake if they have vigilance. This guy. Yeah, he's a little uh, push. Eh. What might not be, like, readily apparent about this step is that it all happens at the same time. 
um, where it might take you a couple minutes, especially if you're playing like a commander game or something. It might take you a little while to determine what is attacking and what it is. Not only what is attacking, but what is attacking is attacking. Whether it's a yeah. player, or planeswalker, or battle, whatever. Um, but all of that happens at the same time. So while you're you know tapping your guys and moving them around or whatever, that might take a couple minutes. In game terms, that happens all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of like you know if you have a you know a mass reanimation spell mm -hmm. you may have counted the creatures out of your graveyard one two three four five yep. but they all just showed up at the same time right right so you may like i'll put the guy out bring it back think about it like oh if i do this and ta and then like then you have to eventually go like this is what it's attacking mm -hmm. and once you say these are the things that are attacking we are done with that step on to the next step on to the next step which is uh, a round of priority. A round of priority to yep. get to declare blockers. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the same thing. It happens all at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are like we are thinking about paper magic. Right. Well, neither of us have played paper magic, and <laughs> I guess I, I guess I played more recently than you, and that was almost a year ago. Yeah. Um, but oftentimes in paper magic, like you will like lay out creatures and be like. And like people will say, "Hey, I will tell you when I have like finalized my blocks." Oh yeah, definitely. And they'll like lay out like, "Okay, I could double block this, and then that bits this here, and then this, and then they might move stuff around." So it's similar again what you do in arena, where like you'll like click, mm -hmm. click your blocker and click the thing, and then like you can kind of pile it up, and then like unclick it and try again, and then eventually right. you hit like submit. Mm -hmm. Right. That's where you're locking That's it in. Yeah, that's all you're doing in paper is you're, like, moving stuff around, and then, like, you have to kind of hit the submit button. Yep. Yeah, you know, like, acknowledge it or some way. The reason for that is, is, like, if you thought the, if you as the attacking player thought blocks were done, mm -hmm. and you were, like, a pump spell, and they were, like, well, actually, my blocks weren't done, now they know about your pump spell. That is right, information so that cannot be put back in the box. Yeah, so now that, so you want to be like you know, like, hey, are these your blocks or whatever yep. to like make that be known. Mm -hmm. um, That's important. Yeah. And That's then after you... It's important for what you just said because as soon as blocks are declared, there's a round of priority. Yeah, where then you get to do stuff mm -hmm. as you move to um, uh, damage. Damage. Well, and first now, strike damage. Yeah, first strike damage, and then damage. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you let damage happen, and then you give something first strike, it doesn't do anything. Correct. It is too late. Because first strike damage happens first, and mm -hmm. then... Even if there isn't, uh, it still happens first. Yeah. Or, like, this happened to me a while back on Arena. First strike damage happened. Mm-hmm. And then there's a round of priority, mm -hmm. and my opponent did something, and then I tried to give my creature a first strike. Ah. But first strike damage had already happened. Right. So it had first strike, but it had no opportunity to strike. Right. It was too late. So, like, once first strike damage happens, you don't get, like, another go right. at first strike damage happening. For sure. Yeah, but first strike damage happens, <gasps> priority pass. And then regular damage, regular damage. Priority happens. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I guess at, at at regular damage, state based actions happen to kill stuff. Right. Uh, once yeah. you've once yeah. you've gone I mean, state based happen, damage, state based yeah. actions happen at every point. But yes, the, it yeah. also happens after. Yeah, damage. so like once damage happens, then the creatures get cleaned up mm -hmm. effectively. And then there's priorities, because I, uh, and then there's the weird step. The weird step. The step after is, damage where you're still in combat? Yeah. It is, um, what was it called? Gosh, we, uh. Um, is there, is there, <clears throat> is there a name for it? Oh, I don't know. Um. 
the reason it matters, mm -hmm. right, is after damage, there's that last priority, and it's like after. Like I mean, it's probably just the something. priority round, like mm -hmm. in the damage but, phase. But that matters for like, you know, sacrifice an attacking creature. Right. Right. So let's say they had like a five five and a one one, mm -hmm. and you killed the one one, mm -hmm. and you like face tanked the five. Right. You just took five. Yep. Now they only have one creature. So now when you cast sacrifice an attacking creature, they sacrifice that creature. The yeah, they sacrifice their five five because technically, you are still in combat, and it was declared as an attacker. It so it is attack. technically still attacking until you leave combat. Yep. So like uh like in a ganjo, mm -hmm. right? Like when you like block if you block let damage happen, you block a four four with uh or a five five with a two two, you let it deal two damage, mm -hmm. your two two dies. Now this has two damage marked on it. Now in a ganjo will deal it four. Mm -hmm. Right? But, like, you do it after damage is dealt. Yeah, I don't know, like, like, how relevant this is anymore, but I know once upon a time this was a trick, is Maze of Ith. This, mm. is, this is also where you would Maze of Ith, so that your attacking creature still dealt its damage, but then you could untap it and remove it from combat, so it would be untapped yeah. for the next turn. You get, like, pseudo-vigilance. Yeah. But <clears throat> not remove it from combat. Well, I mean, yeah. you did remove it from combat, but it still did everything. It did everything in combat except for get get through that last priority pass. Right. So, yeah, like, sacrifice an attacking creature, deal damage to an attacking creature. Uh, again, like, if you're going to, like, team up a lightning bolt mm -hmm. and a 2-2 two -two on a 5-5. Five -five. And there's, you know, there are... I've definitely got blown out by this years ago, right? There are reasons to be like i want to just like have the damage already dealt on it mm -hmm. and then play my my damage spell as opposed to playing the damage spell first right right like it you know because like what if they have like a trample trick mm -hmm. or something or there's also the argument of like when you use the lightning bolt matters and having that extra option after the damage has already been put on the creature right could be beneficial um, and then main phase two. Same thing as main phase one, except exactly. there's not a combat phase following it. Yep. Um, and then you have the end of turn. End of turn gets right. a little tricky as well. So what goes on in here? Um, the active player moves to the end step. Um, once you, I guess this is like how you how you would uh, go about negotiating the end step. The well, active, negotiating. Well, and that's basically yeah. what it is. Um, the active player announces that they're going to move to their end step. There's a round of priority, so the non-active player will get priority. Um, and then you, if nobody does anything, you are immediately in the end step and end of turn things trigger. Uh, kind of like happened with the sagas and drawing a card. That's the first thing that happens is end of turn things trigger. Um, after that, there's another round of priority. And then you have cleanup. Uh, mm. Once cleanup happens, the turn is over. Yes. There is no round of priority after that. But there is one right before cleanup. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is another point where... Like, language is important and language matters. Mm -hmm. So just like when we went, so there's a shortcut of, of go to combat gets you to declare attackers and skips the beginning of combat. Yep. You can say, go to cleanup. Right. And when you're saying, like, go to cleanup, you're asking your opponent, do you want to, wherever we are, do you want to go clear to the very end where the only thing that happens is, is, I discard the hand size, right? Basically, and technically, damage is removed from creatures and stuff, mm -hmm. right? But so when I used to play dredge, do stuff, and then I just say instead of go to end step, I say go to cleanup, because like 
I just want to discard whatever cards are in my hand that I need to discard. Right. Right. And if they're like, yes. Excellent. You discard. And they'd be like, well, I want to do something. It's like, well, no, you said go to cleanup. Right. It's, it is not scummy, but it is definitely like an unusual thing. And like people will just like kind of gloss over it. Yeah. I mean, there's like a difference once, between like what they used to call it, like angle, angle shooter. Angle or, shooting. Yeah. Angle yeah. Shooting. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, hey, I'm doing the correct thing within the rules. Right. But if you're not paying attention and don't understand what the consequences of a yes there is. Correct. Right. It's kind of similar to like when, you know, now this is kind of angle shooting. When like someone would like cast a spell and it'd be like, all right, I'm going to cast whatever. And mm -hmm. you'd be like, oh, okay. Like just like the normal like human response. Right. And then thinking about your responses to the spell. Right. And then you're like, I want to counter it. And they're like, no, 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 you said okay. Yeah, you said it okay. resolved. And it's like, well, no, I was I know, interacting I was with acknowledging you like a human. You. Yeah. Yes, I was acknowledging you. Like you were like, I am doing a thing. And it's like, okay. I understand you were doing a thing. And I'm like, and it's like, I wasn't just saying, like, I know, do not have things to do. Right. I was acknowledging your statement. Yep. And so, like, kind of similar, like, I'm going to go to my cleanup. And they're like, like, okay. But, like, then, like, when you do stuff in your cleanup, because I've definitely been like, people are like, wait, 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 wait. It's like, okay, whatever. But, like, you know, you like sit four cards in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you know about all these now. Like, okay. But uh, we can't go back. But yeah, you could like, again, you could jump to, I've drawn a card mm -hmm. and immediately move to clean up. Mm -hmm. Like draw my card, move to clean up and just skip Everything. the entire turn. Yep. And it's just like, okay. And then they realize that they can't do anything. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> not, not that that is something that like probably really ever happens in modern magic anymore. There's yeah, like no reason to. I can't think of any reason for it to happen, but it exists again, if you want to. Yeah, again, unless you're like playing like dredge or something. Right. Um so, so the reason we went through all of this stuff is because timing is important. And mm -hmm. there is one specific interaction that somebody in Discord was asking about. And it has to do with holding priority. Yes. So what does holding priority mean? Usually, when you do anything, like we've been saying, you then, you know, pass the story stick to your opponent. Oh, that's go, a good hey, way of thinking about it. The story yeah, stick. Yeah. You've got the stick now. Yep. You get to do stuff. Holding priority is, I'm going to hold on to the stick. Mm -hmm. can do a whole bunch of stuff or do two things instead of just one. Right. And then give you the stick back. Yep. And now you have the knowledge of both things that I did. Mm -hmm. And they're both on the stack at the same time. Right. So this matters if you... So like kind of the classic case is Lion's Eye Diamond, mm -hmm. where you cast a spell... And you cast a draw spell, right? Let's say a draw two, right? But you want the mana from Lion's Eye Diamond. And you want those so cards. That you, yeah. So you're like, I'm going to cast my draw spell, hold priority, use Lion's Eye Diamond. Mm -hmm. Now you have priority. So when you sacrifice your Lion's Eye Diamond, with your spell on the stack, you don't know if your spell is going to resolve. Right. Right? But you've now committed another action. Mm -hmm. Your opponent could just... Because if you let the... If you pass priority when you cast the draw spell, when you get to use your Lion's Eye Diamond again, your draw spell is already resolved. Right. Those cards are in your hand and you have to discard them to the Lion's Eye Diamond. Correct. Right? Where if you're like, I'm going to hold priority, I'm going to do this thing... I'm going to cast a spell, then do this other thing in response. Mm -hmm. Responding to yourself, basically. Yes, you're responding to yourself. Now, there are reasons, like I said, there are a myriad of reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. 
most of them resolve uh, revolve around Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, I mean that's probably safe to say that it's the most common. But it's the most common. There are other reasons to do it. Yeah, but um, while it is, it can have advantages. It does expose you to more risk. Oh, definitely. Because you're giving you away are, more information. Yeah, you are committing to more things before you know what your opponent plans to do. Mm-hmm. Right? So, we were talking about holding priority with res- with respect to, like, prowess and things like that. Yep. So, what was... Do you want to talk about this specific example? Um, or... Well, I, I want to ask one question before we get into the specific okay. example. Um, can you think of any, like, modern era reasons to hold priority like something that's been printed <sighs> since fire design hmm like i can think of things that you can hold priority in in response to mm-hmm. but i don't know why you would want to right do you Could... is there a way on arena to hold priority yes oh there oh. is i don't think yes. there is Yes, there is. Oh, okay. You can. Um, uh, is it guild? Is it is it guild mage from um, uh, guilds of Ravnica? Mm-hmm. So it's like second ability was copy a spell that's on the stack. Oh. And the only way you could do it was to to hold priority. You just go into full control mode. Oh, okay. And in full control, so they had to make it so you could hold priority because of is it, work. for is it guild mage to work because it didn't work okay. or well what would happen was you could hold priority if you were in full control mode yeah but if you weren't and you cast a card you never had a chance to respond to is it guild mage gotcha. so now there are times like if you have I think I think it's is it Guild Mage or whatever the heck the that cycle was called yeah. in uh Guilds of Ravnica. Um that if you have a card that requires that requires you to hold priority for it to work, mm-hmm. Arena just holds priority for you. Gotcha. And you might not even notice mm-hmm. that it is doing it. So um there's a bunch of copy spells. Yep. And copy spells because again the templators hate us right (laughs) they have templated copy spells one of two ways recently option one is the way that doesn't require you to hold priority the next spell you cast the next spell you cast is copied yep and then there is option two which requires you to hold priority which is copy target spell yep right and so Copy target spell works one if your opponent casts a spell, mm-hmm. but you don't have. But if you cast a spell, you have to go in full control, yeah. cast the spell, and then, um, um, and then you can and then cast your copy spell. So we've mentioned full control a few times. If you're playing on a keyboard, it's just control, right? You just hold the control key. Yeah, you can toggle it also. Yeah. Like, you, you like, tap the control button, and it, I think it turns on, and then you tap it again. Uh, I thought it was control Z. Toggles it on oh. and off. Oh, I thought control Z untapped your mana when you tapped your mana wrong. Like, undo? Maybe. If know. you're an it's iPad gamer... Not too often that I use it, but... yeah. If you're an iPad gamer, um, if you just hold the, like, they have, like, the, the, the turn progression off to, like, the right-hand side, mm-hmm. if you hold down on it, it will bring up, like, enter full control. Oh, okay. And you go into full control, and then you can, and then the button will be there, and you can click it and get out, or you can hold again, it'll bring up the button, and you can get out. So you have to like hold the, the 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 sequence. So copy spells is the main reason that we hold control now. Yeah. And that is 
um, w depending on how they have them templated. I don't know why they haven't had a meeting Where they and been one? like, hey, like we should just do this. Yeah. Or like this works better on Arena. But I think that Arena has fixed it now. Mm -hmm. That like now you don't have to worry about it and you don't realize that you're doing a I don't know, an advanced rules maneuver. Yeah. <laughs> advanced when, rules like, maneuver. When like when like the game just like when Doesn't you cast play. like yeah, yeah. When you cast your like divination and then it like waits. Right. For you to like if you have a copy spell in your hand. Yeah. Right? And it's like you're not realizing that you're like actually ha would have to say in like real life, like cast divination, hold priority, mm -hmm. cast my fork. Yep. All right. All right. So the example from Discord was um, prowess with the Delaney. Is that the new card? Yeah. It's like a panharmonicon yeah, for small is it creatures. Delaney or Delney. Oh, maybe Streetwise Delney. Lookout. Yeah, that one. I don't know. They're they're all made up names. Yeah. Uh Delny. Yes. So Streetwise Lookout. What's Delny say? Uh well, there's text we don't care about, but creatures you control with power two or less can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. If any ability of a creature you control with power two or less triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Well, it, actually I think both parts of it mattered. Okay. Because we were specifically talking about like Monastery Swiss Spear, a small mm -hmm. creature. Yeah, okay. So with Delny and Swift Spear, you could go to combat with Swift Spear. Mm hmm And it would be unblockable. Mm hmm And then you could go to blocks and it would be unblockable. And That's then not blocked. Right. And then before damage, you could Shock, hold priority, shock, hold priority, runs resolve or whatever. Like, whatever you're going to do, you could hold priority and just cast a flurry of spells. Mm -hmm. And then what would happen is your swift spear would be unblockable. or un Yeah, it would be un Unblocked. not blocked. And because you held priority when you cast all those spells, you would get double prowess triggers for each of those spells. Yes. So you'd end up with uh, whatever it is, seven, 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 seven swift spear, seven, eight. Or, yeah, seven, eight yeah. swift spear, not able to be blocked, like on yeah. the cheap. Because Delny is checking, like each time, like Delny is checking when the spell is the power cast. each, yeah, when it's cast, but the yeah. power each time. Right. So I think we talked about this um, with oh gosh, what is it called? Uh. Uh, uh, I've been playing the deck, uh, the Explorer combo Amalia. deck, Amalia, right? So Amalia has two power. Mm -hmm. So the first time you gained life, uh, you would put the trigger, you'd put the Explorer trigger on the stack twice. Yeah. And then as soon as it hit three power, uh, you wouldn't get two triggers anymore. So the first right. trigger would get you two. Yep. And then each subsequent one, once you hit three power, it'll only be one again. De Delny would turn off. Yeah. Right. Um, same with like a wild growth walker. That first explore, mm -hmm. or the first two, would put two triggers on the stack. Well, I guess it's only one because you automatically go up to three power. Right. So the first explore would put two on the stack. And then it would turn off, mm -hmm. right? If there is some way, like, for you to like hold priority, like you know, you put it a malleap, you get a whatever it's called, uh, whatever, uh, uh, a prosperous innkeeper would double trigger, mm -hmm. right? And if you had some way to like flash, hold priority, and then like flash in a creature, mm -hmm. then an innkeeper would double trigger, and then. Uh, the, and then when you gain life, you would double trigger Amalia, and right. you would keep double triggering it until it hit three power. So if like the top four cards of your deck were lands, mm -hmm. you would get a bunch of trigger, uh, you get extra triggers until you hit three power. Yeah. Um, 
so why why do we have to hold priority there like why can't we just so with the prowess example yeah right so prowess example so okay so you got your monster with spear you have your delaney you cast your shock Mm -hmm. you get two prowess triggers so the prowess triggers are gonna go on the stack Mm -hmm. and they are going to resolve before your spell so right so the stack is um back in my day it was first in last out Mm -hmm. which is still how it works to some degree right right so you put the shock in it's on the stack that causes a trigger which delaney is going to make it double so you're going to get two prowess triggers that are going to go on top of the shock right right um and then once those resolve, now it's so prowess trigger goes on the stack, pass priority, prowess trigger resolves. Prowess trigger goes the next prowess trigger resolve. Pass priority. Yeah. Resolve. Now you have a three power swift spear. Right. Then shock resolves. Yeah. I guess, like, what I was getting at is that once you pass priority, you don't have an opportunity to do it again. So you pass priority to the non-active player who then says, nope, I'm good. You can't say, okay, good, let's do this now. Um, Well, the, I guess, so I guess it only matters if you plan to cast three spells. Because you go shock two prowess triggers on the stack mm-hmm. first power trigger resolves it's a two power creature mm-hmm. you can then shock respond to the next to the next one resolving right but right what i meant was as soon as you're as soon as the non-active player passes priority it it doesn't pass it back to you it passes it to the stack who resolves the next thing yeah but then you have priority back with right. one prowess trigger on the stack. Right. Then you cast your next shock. Mm-hmm. The again, you ask the first prowess trigger resolves. Yep. Now you're at three power, and when you cast your next shock, it is um, it now has three power, so it only triggers once. Right. So if you want to trigger it three times, or you want to trigger it with three spells, you have to hold priority, cast all three. Mm-hmm. Because what that what that's doing is, you're like hold priority, cast it, and then the prowess triggers go on the stack but don't resolve. Cast it, prowess triggers on the stack, don't resolve. Cast the next thing, prowess triggers on the stack, and now you're like okay, resolve them, mm-hmm. and you're like okay, now you have priority. And now your opponent could just be like, shock your monastery Swiss spear. Right. Right. You took on the risk in hopes of like glory and lots of plus one, um, plus one. So actually, I guess the correct thing to do then would be to let the first prowess resolve. Exactly. That way you're out of shock range. Yeah. You take like one card off the, yeah. off the, uh, the list of possibilities. Yeah. Um, so. But- I got one more thing. Okay. I think there were two more things, but I'm having a brain fart, so I can't remember one of them. It's um, nap time. It's late. Yeah. So what happens if we threw something else in the mix, like a welcoming vampire? Okay. Oh, uh, I guess that doesn't work with prowess, though. Oh, no, but it, it would work, work with Delny. So yes. like, what happens if we have two things that are triggering? So, if there are, well, I, so, so uh, let's just say I have two swift spears, like just to make it. Okay. Or how about a swift spear and a monastery mentor? Okay. So if I cast a shock, and I have a swift mm-hmm. spear and a monastery mentor, what happens? Um, let's forget about Delny for a minute. Okay. Okay. okay yeah, okay. that'll make it too confusing. Um, so. Both the Swift Spear trigger and the Monastery Mentor trigger want to go on the stack. Mm -hmm. You, as the active player, get to pick which order they resolve. They go on the stack in, right? Right. Effectively, 
that effectively allows you to pick which order they resolve in. Yeah, right? they're going to resolve in the opposite order that you pick them. Yeah, so basically, it's like, here's the shock. You can put directly on top of it the Monastery Swiss Spear trigger, and then on top of the Monastery Swiss tr trigger, you put the um, Mentor trigger. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to go Mentor trigger resolves, Swiss Spear trigger resolves, um, and then Shock resolves. You kind of like, as the name applies, stack, you kind of like, you think of it as like stacking all these abilities on top of each other. Yeah. And whichever one's on top when you're done building your stack, that's the first one, and then you just work down work the pile. Down. Yep. So you would get two triggers, and you would get to like choose what order they go on the stack so you know how they're going to resolve. So you can... Yep. Now, I'm assuming most of us have turned on on Arena auto-stack triggers. Most you of us besides me. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, okay. I, I put them on the stack. Okay, I do not. Maybe I'm, I have maybe I'm a stack. savage. Um, I think from when we started playing Arena, yeah, till now, it's got auto stack triggers has gotten way better at putting the triggers in the order that you would that would be that is most advantageous for you. Gotcha. Uh, before it was like a crapshoot. Yeah, I can't think of a time where the triggers have gone in an order uh, on in an order that I was like, I wish you wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I'm sure it has happened every so often but it's like pretty pretty rare yeah not enough that i get have gotten mad about it to go click that like option <laughs> but i okay used to have certain decks that i would play yeah. that i would specifically go in and turn it off turn off auto stack trigger because yeah. i knew it screwed up the triggers every time yeah but arena handles a lot of that for you unless you're in a, unless you're a boomer <laughs> and then you're like, hey. No, I got a, this. A, a magic boomer. Yeah. Right? Not a real boomer. A magic boomer. Right. So some of our Zoomer listeners are like, what do you mean there's a way to like stack your own triggers? Yeah. I, I think for me, it's more of a holdover from my rally days. Mm hmm. Where like that was really important, like what order you put it was stuff in. Incredibly important because, you know, you're bringing seven things back to the battlefield at the same time. Like the order that mm -hmm. they enter very much matters. Yeah. Uh, the way now I do that with um uh whatever it's called. What is the white one? Return to the ranks. Yeah. But those are all just life gain triggers. Right. And they don't really matter. <laughs> or like things that things that don't like matter a whole lot. Yeah. Where where it's just like I'm just gonna gain some life, it'll be okay. Yeah. As opposed to like I need this creature to be here. So this other ability can resolve mm -hmm. and use it for something. Um, yeah, so the order they go on the stack, you get to choose as the active player. Yeah. So, like, if you need to put something on the stack and then, like, let it resolve and then respond to the next thing, right? you can. Like, if you had a creature that enters the battlefield and you have to sacrifice another creature, and you also have a creature entering the battlefield that makes a token, mm -hmm. you would want the token to resolve first and the sacrifice to resolve second. So you'd put the sacrifice on the mm -hmm. stack first and then the token. Yeah, exactly. So you could sacrifice so, the token. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for the most part, Unless, like, you're doing really complicated things, like, Arena handles that for you. Yeah. Which is good and bad. Yeah. I guess. Right? Like, you don't have to think about it a whole lot, but yep. also, you're like, oh, it would be nice if we, we still remember how to do this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for the most part, holding priority, like I said, is, a, is an advanced rules interaction. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't it only comes up in like usually weird corner cases or copying spells. Mm -hmm. Um, we got anything have... else to add about timing or turns or active player, and non active player. I don't think like these are like, there are, we, we would have some corner cases, but these are kind of the, uh, kind of the basics. Yeah. If you, um, like I said, like, 
going off of Arena, I think the most important thing uh, that we may not have uh, said, but it was implied, is just, like, in paper, like, communicate. Mm-hmm. Right, like make sure it's like clear, like what you are trying to do. Definitely. Uh, so make your not intentions like a... known, because yeah. you can't assume your opponent has your best intentions at heart. Mm-hmm. That's what they say before you know, every tournament, right? Yes. Don't just show them a card and grunt at them, and then move on. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Cool. You, you have a chancellor of the annex. <laughs> Duly noted. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I. I understand what you were trying to say at me. Mm. Mm. It's like, okay, dude. Yep, got it. Um, got it. But yeah, so... Yeah, but just, like, communicate the priority passes, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, you don't have to be like, I am passing priority to you. Right. But just, like, don't, like, go from your main phase and then, like, turn a bunch of creatures sideways. Yeah. Right? And be like... Attacking, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Go to combat? Like, we skip, like, four things. Exactly. Like, yeah. go to combat, or go to beginning of combat, or whatever. Or go to declare attackers, or whatever you, like, language yeah. you want to use for the appropriate time. Or, like, you know, okay, you know, good, like, you know, hey, it's your, like, when you, when you tell someone, it's your turn, mm. right? Like, you're just saying, I got nothing, dog. Right. And then you've, like, put us you put the you put you in the end step technically and they can be like i want to do something in your end step well i mean wouldn't pass the turn be the same thing as go to clean up to some degree like but like pass the turn doesn't doesn't fair. denote stopping at your end step fair yeah it was like okay your turn yeah yeah fair um but like I think go to clean up is acknowledging like I have too many cards in my hand. Oh, gotcha. Right? Yep. Where if you say your turn, you're basically just like, I don't have anything to do between now yeah. and when you do something as opposed to like go to clean up is kind of like I have yeah. too many cards in my hand. I need to do that thing. I guess like when that has happened to me, I've said go to discard. Yeah, go to discard. Same yeah. kind of thing. Like, um, but just like be clear on what you're saying, mm-hmm. right? You know, uh, well, important for competitive integrity if we do that anymore. Yeah. Like, also, like, just generally good to like make sure people are like having a reasonable time, right. slash, don't feel like they're getting like scumbagged. Yeah. Yeah. Communication's um, important. Uh, also, I don't know. If, uh, you don't have to be like untap, upkeep, draw. Best priority. Like, yeah, like draw. you can like Best mo- you can move the game at like a reasonable, non painful pace. Yeah. Uh, but still like be clear on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, <sighs> sorry, I'm getting old. Yeah, you it's, and it's me almost both. it's almost ten. It's like oh. Gotta go, gotta go snuggle up <laughs> and go to bed. Yep. So, yeah, I think that as a good little reminder of everything, and again, like, these things matter less. It's like when they, like, automate things that you learned how to do, and you're like, I used to have that skill. That skill is no longer valuable. Yep. So, okay, a little aside. Uh, so for me to know what I make chemi- chemistry wise, mm-hmm. had this thing called an NMR. And when I was in grad school, you had to like turn this knob on a control panel and it moved a green and red line up on a window. And you had to go through different axes to like optimize the, uh, the signal you would get from the instrument. Okay. And you click the little button, you turn the knob and the line would move up. Then you'd move to the next axis, do the same thing, move the line up. And you just kept changing the axis. Either like four of them you had to do, or three, Z1, Z2, Z3. And then you would have to go back to the beginning, and you just keep doing it over and over and over again until you got it up as far as you could go on the screen. Mm-hmm. Right. Now there's just a button that says shim. <laughs> and it does all that, and I was like, 
I spent years learning how to shim an instrument, and now it's just boop boop, and it's like oh, it's like I I spent years learning how to like put things on the stack, and now like you know, uh, this like glorified Excel sp- spreadsheet does it for me. Yeah, it's like ah, I had a skill. It mattered. Do you remember for, when like, you had to like actually get on the internet instead of just you were on the internet? Oh yeah, <laughs> mom, hang up the phone. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta go look something up. I gotta play Duke Nukem. I go further back, like, well, I remember my parents like proudly bought me a set of encyclopedias. Yeah, yeah. What Not was a thing uh? Now. What was? Encyclopedia Britannica? No, 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 no. There, there was a digital one that was like multiple CDs. Oh gosh, we had it. My dad bought it. I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't know. I probably had something similar. Yeah, they were white. I don't. Yeah, I remember I, remember I had these like kid encyclopedias. Yeah. Were like little books that like just were like sciencey facts and stuff. I need to find those for Gavin. There you but go. like you're like, you're like I used to know how to use an index. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not a skill I need now. Now I just open the PDF when I go to the search bar, right? Control and I F. search for it. Control F. Find this word. Yep. Like I used to have to go, go look it up. So it's for chumps. <laughs> it is. I still I still use my indexes in some of my books. It's, oh, so do I. It's dark. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely things that I like I've done and then like looked at my students and they're like they have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> like, right, here's how you find stuff in a book. <laughs> this is a All book. Right. This is a book. Yeah. Like so someone today they uh we've just gone off the rails here in the last like five minutes. That's all right. Someone Nobody's today listening anymore anyway, so uh um they I had them like fill out like all the hazards of the chemicals that they use on these little sheets and so this girl, she's like, I did it on my iPad. Can you read it? And she's like, I can, I can zoom on my iPad, but I can't. You can't zoom on the piece of paper. And the text was like super small. Yeah. She's like, I can. Bear, she's like, I really can't read it, and you can't zoom on the piece of paper because <laughs> she had zoomed in so big on her screen. Yeah. It was fine, but then she printed it. it was like it's like size like four font, <laughs> and I was like had my glasses on i'm like i think i can see that i think we're good <laughs> i'll take your word for it <laughs> yeah i was like i'm gonna assume it's there but it was like whew. yeah he's just like oh yeah you you can't zoom in real life this is <laughs> this is in fact a thing you can you just gotta take a picture with your phone and then and then zoom in and zoom in <laughs> hey i got my glasses so i didn't have to do that as much yeah there were definitely some uh reagent bottles and I'm like, I can't read this. And I take a picture and then <laughs> zoom in. The molecular weight of this is... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a student whose dad's my age. And I was like, does he do this trick too? She's like, yeah, he's fighting. putting, Getting glasses. So I'm like, okay, I'm glad about the only one. Yeah. I do that on a daily basis looking for part numbers. Yeah, man. It might be that time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I wear it. contacts. And, like, there's no... I guess I, guess I could get readers as well. <laughs> or do you just have to get new contacts? No, I have the right prescription. No, I, some of the part numbers that we have are like, oh, just teeny tiny, like on a terminal housing, like they're okay. they're teeny tiny. There's there's no way you're uh, reading them with a the naked eye. All right, with uh, with eyeball talk, I think I think we have a show. We have a show. So if you want to reach out to us on social media or like talk about stuff in the Discord. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, X, whatever you call it, um, boondoggle, um, <laughs> email, all those links are in the description, so come say hey, see what's going on. Yeah, hit us up. Maybe you'll be the next episode. Maybe. Uh, if you're looking to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. Casualtryhard.com slash TCG is our TCG player affiliate link. We would appreciate if you used it when you did your magic shopping. It would help us out. The other way is our Patreon, patreon.com slash casualtriardmtg. Sign up, uh, chip a couple bucks in, really helps the show out, and you get access to our pre-show, 
uh, where it's more of what you just got five minutes of. Consider that a teaser. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that was our teaser. And you also get access to our show notes, so you get an idea of what the upcoming episode is going to be a lot about. Um, and you get the satisfaction of knowing you're helping to support the show. So we would appreciate yeah. that. All right. So with that, we'll catch you on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet.